Dead after a massive earthquake in South Asia, developing news in Aventura. Parts of Biscayne Boulevard are shut down after a crew hits a gas line. A South Florida police officer is being remembered after a freak accident. Officers face charges after this brutal beating in New Orleans, and cameras captured every moment of it. The Miami Heat take on the San Antonio Spurs to raise money for victims of recent hurricanes. Plus, a nine-year-old becomes the youngest to swim from Alcatraz to shore, all to help hurricane victims. Hello, everyone. I'm Joy Purdy. I'm Angela Ray, and for Elliot Rodriguez, CBS 4 News at Noon starts right now. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News at Noon. Rescue crews pulled the survivors from rubble two full days after a massive earthquake shook South Asia. Estimates put the death toll at more than 20,000 people. That earthquake hit Pakistan, India, and Afghanistan early Saturday. Some people ran into the streets, others were buried under buildings. CBS 4's Aline Sargani has the latest. Dawn breaks over Pakistan with the sound of airplanes on the runway bringing aid shipments from the United States. We have already got relief supplies on the ground. A C-17 came in last night with um, uh, blankets and tents from um, uh, the U.S. military. At least 20,000 people are dead after Saturday's 7.6 magnitude quake, and that number could double as rescue teams make their way into remote villages. Men are using their bare hands to dig through the rubble of a school and rescue young children trapped inside. It's day three of this makeshift rescue operation. They did find a few children alive, but they warned they can't reach the rest trapped inside without the government's help. At least 120,000 people need shelter right away. And some aid agencies estimate some 4 million people could end up homeless in the wake of South Asia's strongest earthquake in a century. When crisis hits an ally, another ally steps forward, and that's what we've done. The first shipments of aid were flown in from American military bases in Afghanistan. Now U.S. troops are flying helicopter missions into those areas rescuers can't reach because of landslides. In Washington, Aline Sergani. CBS 4 News. The U.S. is sending help to another disaster area. Southern Command sent a response team to Guatemala City over the weekend to help with flooding. The 58-person unit will help with relief efforts in the southwestern part of that country. Rising waters and mudslides have buried entire communities. More than 650 people in Guatemala are dead, and search efforts in much of the harder-hit regions have been suspended. The Southcom team will help move supplies and aid people needing medical attention. And we are following developing news right now. Parts of Biscayne Boulevard and Aventura are shut down after crews accidentally hit a gas line. CBS 4's Ileana Varela is live on the scene with more for us. Illy. Yeah, Angela, that gas line rupture is right on the corner of 209th Street and Biscayne Boulevard. And uh, the big concern is that this gas is flammable and there is, of course, a possibility of fire. That's why there's so many crews on the scene you see here. As a result, this whole block has had to be uh, blocked off, if you will, from 213th Street to uh, 207th Street, Northeast and Biscayne Boulevard. You can see the traffic beginning to bottle up at his, at his, as it's rerouted around the scene. Now, let me show you some video that we shot from Chopper 4. Uh, to basically tell you what happened. Uh, we're told that there was a crew working on installing a new traffic light here at 209th and Biscayne, and uh, they dug down and hit a gas line. Actually, they're right across the street from Aventura Hospital, but we're told the hospital is not being affected in any way. And in case you're uh, asking yourself, yes, these lines are supposed to be marked, but apparently in this case, it was not. Yeah, it's usually marked, but for whatever reason, that particular area was not marked as having a gas line. We have a gas line that runs north and south on Biscayne Boulevard that's a four inch line. We also have one on 209th that is a two inch line. We're hoping obviously it's the smaller line, but in any event we have the scene under control. Now I should tell you that as you get close, um the smell is very strong, but we're told it's not toxic. And that water you see gushing out, we thought at first it was a, ma a water main line break, but it turns out that as they dig, they pour water into a hole to prevent it, uh, the walls from collapsing. So it's basically just your gas line break. Again, not toxic, but it is flammable. They've got four uh, fire trucks out here. They have two hazmat teams. They have their technical uh, 
response unit standing by just in case uh, the gas company is on the scene uh, hoping to cap this as soon as possible and as we come out here uh, live uh, again I have to stress that that the big concern is not the toxic toxicity of the gas but uh, the, the flammability and because the wind is blowing in this direction you see this parking garage that's a big concern they have uh, crews monitoring the air and they've got police on hand so nobody uh, decides to start their car just in case uh, I don't know if they're being too ambitious, but they tell me they should have uh, this pretty much cleared in about an hour. Live in Aventura, Ileana Varela, CBS 4 News. Well, it looks like a, the beginning of our week will be warm and dry, and we like that. Yes, but how long is that going to stick around? Oh. Let's check in with CBS 4 meteorologist Elizabeth Hart, live in weather control. Elizabeth. Well, good afternoon. This nice dry weather could be sticking around long enough for us to actually enjoy it. Ileana was talking about the winds there, and that's part of the reason we're seeing warm and dry conditions today. We have a north and west wind, and that's going to keep us in the sunshine throughout most of this Columbus Day. So here's the setup. We certainly have had a lot of sunshine out there through the early part of the day and with that northerly flow it will continue to usher in some dry air especially in the mid and upper levels we're looking at a fairly stable weather pattern generally uh, this time of the day we've got a pretty strong east breeze going not so much so we will keep that dry air coming now how about the tropics well we had a very bizarre incident over the weekend we had hurricane vents form just off the coast of Portugal we'll talk a little more about that later in the newscast but check this out see that spin right there just to the south of Bermuda well that's a mid and upper level low pressure. It's not down at the surface and it's actually helping to most likely prevent any development. We have a little trough down here right around Puerto Rico and so it's pushing all of that thunderstorm activity or at least the tops of those thunderstorms off to the east and none of those little areas of disturbed weather can get their act together but that may be changing in the coming days. Down here we have a little tropical wave a couple hundred miles east of the Leeward Islands. We'll talk more about that as well but today we don't have to worry about any of that. Lots of sunshine out there maybe just a stray storm and we'll top out Near 90. Details in a few minutes. Police in Miami have a murder mystery on their hands today. Family members alerted police after not being able to reach the victim. When police went into Joel Dennison's home last night near Northwest 56th Street and 7th Avenue, they found him in a pool of blood. Investigators say they found the victim's vehicle and are now talking with the driver to see if he knows anything about this crime. Miami police say they've caught an armed carjacking suspect who took them on a short chase. Officers set a perimeter overnight after the suspect took off near Northwest 2nd Place and 65th Street. The suspect was caught a short time later and taken into custody. No one was hurt. A South Florida police officer is being remembered after falling 100 feet to his death. CBS 4's Ted Scout and live on the scene of that deadly accident. Ted. Yeah, Joy, what a tough day for Fort Lauderdale police officers. They lost one of their own. Now, he was only on the force for a couple of years, but during that time, he made quite a name for himself. A sad memorial on the spot where Fort Lauderdale police officer Jose Diaz died. He fell 100 feet from the interstate above early Saturday morning. Officer Diaz was off duty on his way home at four in the morning when he stopped to help a fellow officer on a traffic stop. For some reason, Diaz went over the side likely not realizing he was on a bridge. For this to happen the way it did, you know, it's just hard to swallow. You know? For fellow officers and Diaz family, this is a tragedy almost beyond comprehension. In his 10 years as a New York City cop and two years as an officer in Fort Lauderdale, Diaz was known as a guy who went above and beyond just like when he died. He didn't have to stop to help a fellow officer. He just did. Jose Diaz is probably one in a million officers who, uh, has a very big heart from the young to the old. Uh, I'll give his time on duty, off duty, uh, helping people out. And officers tried to help him all the way until the very end. The first cop by his side began CPR, then another arrived in help. But despite their desperate attempts, it was already too late. Now he'll be remembered not only as a good cop, but as a loving dad and a great friend. And funeral arrangements are appending. We understand there may be a service here in Fort Lauderdale on Thursday. After that, the body will be returned to New York for burial. We're live in Fort Lauderdale. I'm Ted Scout, CBS 4 News.
Thousands of boaters are on the water today as the annual Columbus Day Regatta wraps up, but not all the festivities have been safe. CBS 4's Nefertiti Jacquez live in Crandon Marina with the latest. Nefertiti. Hey Angela, well luckily this year there haven't been as many accidents, but if you take a look, the day is not over yet, so police say they will be patrolling the bay. The regatta really huge. Everybody goes out. Whole yeah. weekend, yeah. Beautiful. It's the last day of the 51st Columbus Day Regatta, and boaters were not about to let their boating day or holiday go to waste. Some folks even came out early, hoping to avoid the busy waters like what was seen throughout the weekend. We went all the way out to the lighthouse. It's beautiful. So with the sun, some food, and some pals, the annual regatta was set off when thousands of boaters took to the waterways to celebrate Columbus's discovery of America. And this year, along with the partiers, the Coast Guard stressing the importance of safety out on the sea. We want to make sure that uh, we have enough police presence out there so it will be a deterrent and these individuals will not drink and operate their vessels. Mainly when accidents like Saturday's hit and run water crash occurred, sending one man to the hospital. And while it's nothing compared to three years ago when three people died at the regatta, police say it's always better to be safe. And this Columbus Day, that's what many are doing. Just watch the boat, relax, and come back tomorrow to work. By the way, I just spoke with officials, and they say they're very proud of the fact that this is the third year in the row that there have been no deaths. So it pretty much has been a good weekend and a good holiday for most. Out here in Crandon Park off of Key Biscayne, Nefertiti Jacquez, CBS4 News. Civil engineers are meeting in New Orleans to figure out why the city's levee system failed after Hurricane Katrina. Water rushed over and then through the levees de designed 30 years ago to protect that city. Engineers want to know if Katrina was just stronger than what they prepared for or if the construction just failed. The city showed more signs of life, by the way, over the weekend as one line of Amtrak service returned to New Orleans. Well, basketball season hasn't started up yet, but the Miami Heat and the San Antonio Spurs are hitting the hardwood for hurricane relief. CBS 4's Lee Davalos live at the AAA with a preview. Hey, Lee. Hey, Angela. Well, this is really a great reason to come out and watch the Heat Spurs game tonight. All the proceeds from the event, from concessions to ticket sales, go to help these Katrina victims. Now, the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs seen here playing back in February have come together along with Carnival Cruise Lines, the title sponsor, to play tonight's game. And all for Hurricane Katrina victims. Money from ticket sales, concessions, retail sales, even the parking will be donated to the American Red Cross and to a charity chosen by the Heat, Spurs, and the National Basketball Players Association. Plus, Carnival has promised to buy any of their remaining tickets to ensure the donation to the Hurricane Katrina victims will top the $1 million mark. Uh, it's very important. Um, I think, like I said before, you know, everybody has done their own individual things, but to do something as a team, uh, means a lot to us because that's why we look at ourselves as a unit. So to come out here as a unit and do it um, in front of our home fans and, um, and with, with the world champions is going to be a great cause. You know, to put something together big like this, um, and like I said, it's just the least we can do, um, you know, for those people, the things that they've been through. And uh, just try to give back uh, as a unit, like you said, I think it'll be big. And the game is scheduled to begin at 7.30 tonight, and we've just learned that tickets have sold out for tonight's event, so it should be a great evening and all for a great cause. We're live in Miami. Lee Davalo, CBS 4 News. Another hurricane relief effort is underway in California. This morning, this nine-year-old swam from Alcatraz to Aquatic Park. We're talking nearly a mile and a half in the San Francisco Bay's chilly waters. The boy did it, finishing his swim right at 11.30. He raised $30,000. And sharks? Ah! cares about sharks. Oh, good for him. Yay. <laughs> Still ahead on CBS 4 News at noon. Police officers in New Orleans are in trouble with the law after a news crew catches them beating a man. New guidelines may help prevent sudden infant death syndrome. Stay with us. Did you know you can still buy low-priced Florida land? Our properties start at $36.50 per acre. Come to our special Florida acreage sale this weekend. You could live here and commute 40 miles to work in Tallahassee. You could vacation or retire here and spend your days fishing 29 miles away in the Gulf, or taking a short walk to the Osceola River, or farming and hunting on your own large acreage. I'm Jim Jean. Call me and my family for details at 1-800-722-JEAN. Hi, 
I'm Dr. Orlando Silva from Young Sylvester. One in seven women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. Fortunately, breast cancer is highly curable if detected early. Women over 40 should have a mammogram yearly, and research shows that together, monthly breast self-exams can detect 70% of all cancer masses. Perform your monthly breast exam and get an annual physical exam. Remember, early detection saves lives. For more information or to make an appointment, call UM Sylvester, South Florida's only university-based cancer center. Demanding husband. Grant treats me like I'm stupid. You wanted her to mow the yard in something sexy? Help her get out of her comfort zone a little bit. Oh, I think she's out of her comfort zone. Next, Dr. Phil. Today at 3 on 4. If you see news in the making, dial star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. Three New Orleans police officers are in trouble this noon for repeatedly punching a 64-year-old man. The entire thing caught on camera. The officers pled not guilty to battery charges this morning. CBS 4's Yusilla Ramirez live in satellite control with that tape. Yusilla. Well, the three officers were in court this morning and they pleaded not guilty following the beating of a 64-year-old man Saturday night and the assault of an Associated Press television news producer at the scene in the French Quarter. Now, police officials are now promising there will be a criminal investigation. In the video, okay. you can see New Orleans police officers repeatedly punching 64-year-old Robert Davis in the head, bashing him against a stone wall before wrestling him to the ground and handcuffing him. Police say Davis was drunk and resisting arrest, but it didn't end there. Police tempers continued to flare as one officer confronted a television news producer. Then a second cameraman shot this video from the balcony of a nearby hotel. It shows Davis's face covered with blood. New Orleans Police Department officials took a look at the tape Sunday morning. Well, uh, to see this tape is, it's troubling. Police Chief Warren Riley says the tapes don't tell the entire story. What is obvious is that uh, our officers used uh, more than the force necessary. These videotapes emerge after allegations that some police officers participated in looting during and following Hurricane Katrina. The owner of a Cadillac dealership says policemen took some of his cars. The other investigation will look into charges that more than 270 police officers deserted their posts during the hurricane. Some New Orleans residents say the Saturday night beating is just another example of the police out of control. It ain't worth the paper they printed on. It ain't worth the badge they put on. Others defend the department, saying the recent disaster has put the cops under tremendous stress. If a tourist or a local is acting stupid and they get in trouble with the police, they deserve what they get. Now, a trial has been set for the officers for January. They were released on bond and have been suspended without pay. Robert Davis is also looking at charges of public intoxication, battery on a police officer, and resisting arrest. Yusilla Ramirez, CBS 4 News. In Dr. Sean's medical file, a simple baby accessory may help prevent sudden infant death syndrome. The American Academy of Pediatrics says that babies should be given pacifiers at bedtime to prevent SIDS. Another tip, the baby should sleep in the same room as the parents, but not in the same bed. The measures stop little ones from falling into a deep sleep, which seems to be a problem for infants prone to SIDS. A happy reunion for a missing boy who is now back with his family. The seven-year-old Las Vegas boy wandered away during a family camping trip. He had been missing for more than a day. While a rescuer on horseback spotted the boy about 10 miles from where he disappeared, the little boy's in good condition and did not need any medical assistance. Happy, happy family oh, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Rip tides caused problems for two surfers in Oregon. They got stranded near some rocks and the Coast Guard had to bring in a chopper to rescue them. Both men were pulled out safely and medical workers say the surfers did not appear to have any injuries. A three-person crew is coming back to Earth this morning after spending a week aboard the International Space Station. Among them, a U.S. scientist who paid $20 million for the round-trip ticket aboard a Russian Soyuz rocket. Also on tonight's return flight, the two-member crew that spent nearly six months running the space station. The rocket undocks this evening around 5.30. Next on CBS 4 News at noon, Elizabeth Hart is back with a complete look at a forecast. Hundreds of people are forced from their homes because of flooding. Now a state of emergency has been declared. Is trouble... Oh, excuse me. First, today's Hispanic Heritage Trivia question. Yes. My bad. Roughly half of the nation's Dominicans live where? Miami, New York City, or New Jersey? We'll have that answer a little later in the newscast. Stay with us. October, that means baseball and only one choice for news at 10.
Hello, I'm Jennifer Santiago. Get the inside scoop on how to find discount prices from computers to CDs to videos. Discover the secret coupon codes of major retailers and start saving big bucks. Don't miss our special report, Secret Sales. That plus today's news, weather and sports all tonight on UPN 33 News at 10. CBS 4 News brings you more morning news, traffic, and weather with half the commercials. Get more of the news you want right now. Only on CBS 4 News this morning, weekdays from 5 to 7 a.m. You send them off to school with a healthy lunch, but is there hidden danger inside your kid's lunchbox? See what lab results reveal. I'm astounded. And learn how to avoid packing a toxic lunchbox. Tonight at 5 and 11 on CBS 4 News. CSI Miami has only 48 hours to free a killer with a shocking secret. Is he the right guy, Frank? You got somebody better serving him up. And it's tearing the team apart. It's analyze and report. Have you got a problem with that? Sit down. 48 hours doesn't mean that. That kid doesn't have 48 hours. Come on, this, this kid, he did it. There's something more to this story. A new CSI Miami, CBS Tonight. As part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, please join Publix and Kellogg's and help keep the promise of curing breast cancer in our lifetime. A 25 cent donation will be made to the Komen Race for the Cure with the purchase of any Special Case cereal or bars and Smart Start cereal during the month of October. And get your promised wristband to show your support. Look for specially marked packages of Special Case cereal and bars and Smart Start cereal. So take charge of your health. Early detection can help save lives. Sponsored by Kellogg's, proud sponsors of the Komen Race for the Cure. Were you one of six million Floridians left in the dark this past hurricane season? Never lose your power again. No matter what happens, you can be comfortable and secure with an emergency standby generator, a backup system that automatically restores your power within 60 seconds and protects you 365 days a year. Protect your lifestyle, your assets, your home, your entire family. Personalized power systems. Never lose your power again. Call today. CBS4 Weather is sponsored by the South Florida Water Management District, protectors of the Everglades. Three people are feared dead after flooding in New Hampshire. A motorist and their passenger accidentally drove off a washed out road Sunday. A third person was washed away while in a kayak. New Hampshire's governor declared a state of emergency, calling in the National Guard to help. More than 800 people had to evacuate their homes statewide because of the flooding. Officials are also keeping a close watch on area dams to make sure they don't overflow. It's just been a heck of a year all over mm -hmm. the world when it comes to weather. It sure uh, has, yeah. When we do those year-end reviews, yeah. uh, it's going to be a December. big long packet. It is all about the weather, natural disasters. But can I say how much I appreciated the great weather we had this week? <laughs> Wasn't it beautiful? It was I mean, all oh. last week we talked about, oh my yep. gosh, these tropical systems might come together. It's going to be a mess for several days, and then we lucked out. So uh, mm -hmm. a couple things going on out there in the tropics. We'll talk about those momentarily. But it is a beautiful Columbus Day. We have some nice dry air in place, courtesy of that west northwest wind, and uh, it feels pretty good. A little summary, 85 the current temperature here at CBS 4 Weather Control, 85 in Miami, 86 in Fort Lauderdale, and 85 down in the lower keys. We've had no rain here today, and in fact, we might get through the entire Columbus Day without a drop of it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the October stats because we are now officially about a third of the way through the month of October. I know time just flies, doesn't it? But uh, we have been much warmer than we should be, and we've been wetter than we should be in most circumstances. 82.1 is the average temperature, so those are the first 10 days of the month averaged out and that is nearly two degrees above normal pretty big deal up in Fort Lauderdale kind of the same scenario just slightly cooler and as far as the rainfall goes we're just under the three inch mark in Miami and running up at about four and a quarter in Fort Lauderdale so we have more than twice what we should have in the rain bucket up in uh, Broward County we're gonna have a few days reprieve from the rain we will see some nice dry conditions but we're gonna have to watch a couple things notice this enormous spin just to the south of Bermuda that is a mid and upper level area of low pressure. There's nothing reflecting down at the surface as a result of that low, but we do have a, kind of a trough well to the south of it extending across Puerto Rico.
Rico down towards the Virgin Islands and it has been very wet here for the last several days with flooding rain across much of Puerto Rico. So what's happening right now is that the flow around this counterclockwise is shearing all the thunderstorm activity off to the east. So it certainly is not going to be coming our way anytime soon. The other interesting thing in the tropics is a tropical storm Vince. This is so far north and east. I think we're probably going to find that this is the farthest north and east that we've ever seen something like this develop. It was a hurricane now downgraded to a tropical storm and it is just about 175 miles northeast of the Madeira Islands. It will bring some rain to Portugal, Spain and maybe even northern Africa. Plenty of sun around here. A couple of showers. We'll top out near 90, which is, again is above normal for uh, early to mid October into the overnight. Pretty nice evening out there. Should be mostly dry with a nice ocean breeze developing and through the rest of your week. It looks great. We should uh, be relatively dry all the way through Friday. Enjoy. You like this music, I do. Don't you? I love it. Uh -huh. <laughs> a new song by Madonna may be causing a Kambala conflict. Mm -hmm. The song on our upcoming album includes a track about a 16th century Jewish mystic and Kabbalah scholar. Isaac is about Yitzhak Luria, but Kabbalah rabbis who oversee his tomb and seminary think the tribute is actually an attempt to cash in on his name. They say it could lead to divine retribution. The album, Confessions to a Dance Floor, is set to be released in mid-November. Well then, we'll be right back. <laughs> First, a quick look at the numbers on Wall Street. Dana Reeve, new information on her cancer battle. Then, Laura Flynn Boyle on the new crop of skinny stars. I was the first man. And more of our Lindsay Lohan exclusive. Next Insider, tonight at 7.30 on 4. You're invited to the grand opening of Overlook Bay, an exciting new waterfront community on spectacular 34,000-acre Norris Lake. Overlook Bay features beautifully wooded lakefront and lake access parcels with free boat slips from just $34,900. During the grand opening sale, take advantage of huge pre-construction savings, plus pay no closing costs on the lakefront or lake access parcel of your dreams. For details on these new, never-before-seen lake properties, call 800-704-3154 or online at lakefrontbargain.com. Has driving become difficult? Does the glare from the sun seem worse? Does your vision appear more blurred or distorted? If so, cataracts may be affecting your vision. The Rand Eye Institute, established by Dr. William J. Rand, is a leader in vision correction and provides a panel of over 20 doctors specializing in cataract surgery, corneal conditions, treatment of glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, and more. To schedule an evaluation, call 877-RAND-EYE or go to randeye.com. The Rand Eye Institute, celebrating 25 years of excellence in ophthalmology. Medicare is changing in 2006. If you have questions about the changes, we can help you find the answers. Stop by the Humana Mobile Medicare Information Center and talk face-to-face -face with a Humana Medicare advisor. Visit one of the locations near you. Let's talk. Lucky me. I've got a Splenda Daddy. All the sweetest dads know about Splenda, the no-calorie sweetener made from sugar so it tastes like sugar. Almost anywhere you use sugar, you can use Splenda. When your muscles take a beating, nothing stronger or faster than Motrin IB. Not Advil, not Aleve, nothing. Motrin IB, medicine with muscle. Mr. Food is sponsored by New Funnel Cake Carnival at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Here's the answer to today's trivia question. New York City. Roughly half of the nation's Dominicans live there. I got it right. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> and that'll do it for CBS More News at Noon. Thank you for watching. <laughs> well, we'll be back here again at 5 o'clock. You're me. Have a cool Columbus Day. <laughs> Enjoy. 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 Oh.